Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. I'm Linda. Miss Gizmo. We're the village's newcomers. And uh, today it's time for Mailbag Monday. Monday. And uh, we've accumulated some questions from the past week or so and uh, going to bring them to you with some answers that we hope that uh, will help you guys as you're in the fact-finding process about the villages. First question is from Tom of Erie, Pennsylvania. And he wants to know, is there golf cart parking or do you just park in spots like an automobile? Good question. It really is. Linda got scolded big time <laughs> our first month here because she parked right in the middle of a parking space like a car. Right, I sure did. Went to Walmart the first week we were here and parked in the middle of the parking lot or parking spot and got out and this lady scolded me. She said, that's not the way you do it here. Yeah. You, when you have a car space, a parking space in a parking lot, it's big enough for two golf carts, one on the left, one on the right. Usually you pull one all the way in and the other one sits caddy cornered. So you can have two carts parked in one space. Now downtown, there are spaces marked off smaller, just for golf carts. Mm -hmm. But ordinarily you can share, golf carts can share car spaces just like everybody else. Right. Tom also asks, and it's a good question and one that I had, if you have a double garage, can you use one side for a car and the other side for a wood shop? And the answer to that is? Yes, you can. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you can do whatever you want inside your garage. Can you cut wood at 11 p.m. at night with a table saw? Probably don't want to do that. Yeah. You'll wake up neighbors or disturb people. But yes, you can have a shop in your garage. Now, they don't like you to run businesses from your home in a residential neighborhood here in the villages, but you can definitely have a hobby shop in your garage. Scott Duncan, one of our uh, top viewers from up there in Kentucky, he wants to know, what are your thoughts on carpeting in the bedrooms? Well, we like it. We do like it. Yeah. At nighttime, when you get out of bed, it's nice for your toes to hit that carpet. And you could have a, what's it called, luxury vinyl tile and throw a, mm -hmm. put a, a throw rug over it or, mm -hmm. or whatever, but... Uh, we like the wall-to-wall -wall carpet. Some people don't like it because of mold issues. We haven't encountered that yet. No. So we're carpet people. Uh, Cindy White wants to know if there's a snootiness factor in the villages. Well, hmm. I sure don't How like dare she ask a question like that? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's snooty? <laughs> of no. course there is, Cindy. <laughs> there's snooty people everywhere. <laughs> there are. There are. There are people like that every place. Uh, we haven't bumped into too many of those type people, but I'm yeah. sure they're here. Linda Pearl would like to know um, about, the, in our ride-alongs, we talked about uh, on-demand water heater in the front. What's that all about? I don't know what in the front means, but on the side of, of oh. homes, especially in the Southern Oaks area, you're going to find these big boxes with pipes coming out of them going into the home. It's an on-demand water heater, and I'm no expert. Yeah. Just like everything we tell you, this is for entertainment value and maybe a little informational value, but we don't guarantee any of it because I don't know how they work, but I do know that they replace a water heater inside the home, that big round tank that sits in your closet. You won't have that if you have it on demand. When the water flows through there, it's superheated and pumped into the house mm -hmm. where you can uh, use hot water. You never run out of hot water that way. I've heard that it takes a long time to get it sometimes, that uh, when you turn it on, it's a, it's a long wait until the water gets hot in your home. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's what an on-demand water heater is. It's outside your home, very visible from the street. You'll see thousands of them down in the Southern Oaks. This is an interesting question right here. I would love to move there. My husband wants to stay in bleep until he dies. Do you have singles that move there asking for a friend? Well, we did a show uh, <laughs> six or eight months ago about singles in the villages. Yeah. There are plenty. There are, are single people that have never married. There are widows. There are widowers. There are divorced people. You're going to see a population of single people here. We do hope to do a show with the Singles Club in the near future. 
Susan writes in and asks questions about the pools here. We have only outdoor pools here and they are heated. Uh, they're heated to 85 degrees and uh, it can be a little chilly when it gets the weather outside is below 60. Uh, so you're gonna feel the wind breeze, but for the most part, they're amazing. You're gonna love it. Is it still chilly if it's 61? <laughs> Probably. Mm -hmm. What about 63? All right, get, I get it. But yeah, they're heated, so. What about 70? Be quiet. <laughs> it's heated, you're gonna like it. Stay under the water. <laughs> Lawrence asks a question. Uh, he wants to know what happens when you're no longer active and you need care. What happens to your house? Do you still get charged amenity fees, etc.? Well, Lawrence, that happens down here. I mean, this is an aging community. People come here to retire and age gracefully. And eventually there will, there will be people that have to spend time either away from their home temporarily or permanently. If you still own your home, you're going to have to pay amenity fees because those rec centers are still open. The pools are still open. Uh, your community watch is still running. You know, things are still happening. Even though you're not in your home, they need to be paid for. So yeah, you're going to have to pay an amenity fee. On the other hand, this community has an abundance of services and places of, for rehabilitation, uh, for housing, etc for people that can no longer live in their current homes. So all your needs will be met, but you will be paying an amenity fee as long as you own a home. Uh, there are people with walkers and canes. There's a lady that walks through our neighborhood almost every other day on a walker. You will see people with disabilities and there actually are homes here that have been set up for uh, disabled American veterans, actually. Randy and Susan sent in a question. Can you have an invisible fence installed in your yard if you have a designer home? Yes, many people do have uh, an invisible fence mm -hmm. and that's no problem at all. They work wonderful, but they work best if you also have an invisible dog. <laughs> Greg writes with several good questions. One is, must your car be garaged every night? Greg, that's a good question. And one that I wish I could give you a different answer. The answer is no, your car does not have to be garaged every night. We like the fact that houses look better without cars parked in front. But sadly, some will have one car parked in front. Some might have two parked in front. So you may do that. I don't think it's in the best interest of your neighborhood, but it is legal. Here's a question that comes up and I've been not avoiding it, but just trying to gather information before I answer it. Yeah. We answer it. <laughs> we don't really know. <laughs> it's from Sunil and Siji. I hope I said that right. He's wondering, are there age restrictions to buy in the villages because he is 48 and his wife is 44. He says, we've heard that it's a 55 plus community. You are correct. It is a 55 plus community. I called the village's sales center to talk with an agent about this and was told that one inhabitant of each house is supposed to be 55 or older. But on the other hand, we know people that are not 55 that own homes here. So there are exceptions and they take it on a case by case basis, depending on your age and situation, I guess. But uh, it can be done, obviously, or we wouldn't have friends that are less than 55. Right. Will that extend all the way down to 48? I'm not sure. Can someone age 48 buy a home and rent it out until retirement? Not sure about that either because of the age factor. Your best bet's to call the village's sales office mm -hmm. and get it straight from the horse's mouth. This is a question from John and Lauren Neubauer, and they ask about our thoughts about the town squares. Do we visit the town square near us more than the other town squares? And I think we do. That's a big yes. Mm -hmm. We go generally to Brownwood. Do we also go to Spanish Springs? We have. Mm -hmm. um, Sumter Landing, yes. 
It's one of my, Sumter Landing is a lovely it's town square. It's beautiful. It's Very Sumter nice. Landing. But Brownwood's the most convenient. We can take our golf cart there in 15 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. So that's where we generally go. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't go much. No. When we moved here first, it's a novelty. Uh, we went fairly often. And every time we have company, we take them to the town square because it's so cool. Yeah. You know, you see people down there dancing that wouldn't dance in a million years in their hometown. And they're out there shaking a leg. But uh, it's something to see. So we take all our guests. Uh, but other than that, we don't go very often anymore. No. Especially since the new rules with the pandemic. But uh, we should go more. We should. We will. But not dance. <laughs> not, probably not dance. We like to watch. Our final question today will come from Steve. Steve wants to know, do you see many people our age coming down to visit? My wife and I are in our mid-50s. Steve, you are what it's all about. <laughs> you are Mid it. Mid-50s <laughs> is the shizzle. You are the ones. <laughs> You're the ones that uh, need to come. That's yeah. what it's made for you. Yeah. So, yes, lots of people like you, Steve. Come on down and uh, en you'll have a great time. Enjoy. That's going to do it for Mailbox Monday. Hope you enjoyed the questions. Write them in, villagesnewcomers at gmail.com, or you can uh, send us snail mail, if you, if you prefer, Post Office Box 888, Fruitland Park, Florida, 34731. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and we can't wait to see you next time. And season's greetings to every one of you. Santa's been uh, watching over us here. We hope you have a very, very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Until next time. See you when you get here.